so I want to share with you this morning on a topic called the God of the valleys and the mountaintops. We, each one of us, we go through life and we have our life experiences where um, we have the good times and we have the bad times. We have the mountaintop experiences and we have the valley time experiences. And many, we ha many people have this misconception that if I do better in life, the better choices that I make, I can avoid the valley time experiences. I just want to break it down to you. It's not possible, okay? So it's going to be a little pessimist in the beginning, but I'm going to get to the good part a little closer to the end. Not that I'm a negative person, but many times if you prepare yourself for something that's about to happen, you're not in shock and you're not in fear and you're not at dismay when you enter that season, right? So if you know that something's going to hurt and when it hurts, you're like, okay, I, I expected it, right? But if you expect always sunshine and, and, and flowers and all these things and all of a sudden a valley experience comes into your life, you might turn to blame God or you will look within yourself to saying, I've done something wrong, God has that fault or this or that. There's an old proverb that says that all sunshine and no rain makes a desert. And you know, you don't want to be in a desert. Why? Because nothing is alive in a desert, correct? So God on purpose, not that he uh, shelters us, but he allows us to go through the valley season of our life to show himself as powerful in our life and to teach us through those valley experiences. That's something that I want to share with you this morning. That life is a mixture of good and the bad, highs and the low, mountaintops experiences and valleys. There's nothing that you can do, pray, fast, give, sacrifice, memorize the whole Bible from the beginning to an end to make you avoid a valley time experience in your life. There's nothing that you can do. The Bible says that the rain falls on the good and the bad, on the just and on the unjust. You have to understand that good things happen to bad people. That's, I, I said it correctly. And also bad things happen to good people. God is not a God that says that I am weak when you are going through a hard time. God says, no, you experience my power when it is the darkest in your life. Because many times we feel like, well, when good things are happening in my life, God is good. He's all powerful. Yeah, he's a healer. But did you experience in him as your deliverer? You've known about him as a deliverer, but have you experienced him as a deliverer? Have you ever experienced him as your healer? You might have read and known about him as a healer, but you haven't experienced him as your healer. Have you experienced him as your shelter, as your provider, not just knowing about, but if you have you experienced him in your life? Because when you experience him, that produces faith. And my Bible says that it is impossible to please God without faith. So God almost wants to prepare us to say that we live in this world. The Bible says that in this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Then he who is in me is greater than the one that is in the world that we also can overcome. Amen. And our, I want to read to you in this scripture in first Kings, 20 verse 23 if they could put up on the back and it says the funny thing about God is, is many times he wants to protect his name he doesn't want to be known as the God of only just the good he wants to be known the God that he's with you in the darkest times in this scripture in first Kings 20 23 it says and the servants of the king of Syria said to him their gods are the gods of the hills Therefore, they are stronger than we, but if we fight against them in the plain, in the valley, surely we will be stronger than they are. Devil's biggest tactic, and has never changed, is to isolate you by yourself in your valley time. And he thinks, and that's his only strategy, that in the valley time, he's stronger than you are. 
it's still, still the same strategy from the beginning till end. He wants you to question God when you're going through the hard time. He wants you to curse God and to be say, you know what? Yeah, God, you're a good God, but why am I going through the bad things in my life? That's a still number one strategy. And we continue reading in verses 27, 28. It says, now the children of Israel encamped before them like two little flocks of goats. Like these guys are just minority. While the Syrians filled the whole countryside. So these guys were weak. They were outnumbered and they were in the valley. Then the man of God came and spoke to the king of Israel and said, Thus says the Lord, because the, because the Syrians have said the Lord is the God of the hills, but he is not the God of the valleys, I will deliver all this great multitude into your hands, and you shall know that I am the Lord. A few things I want you to, to notice is that valleys are just part of life. They are, because we live in this broken society, broken world, and sin-filled culture, valleys are just part of life. There's nothing that you can do to avoid it. There's no scriptures that you can quote, blame it, grab it, toss it, whatever, whatever you want to do. There's nothing that you can do to avoid the valleys in your life. They are just part of life. And 1 Peter 4, 12 says, don't be surprised when you are tested by troubles or painful suffering as if something unusual is happening to me. You have to understand, even the promised land had giants. It's just like God says, I'm going to give you this good thing. But then they got to that good thing. They're like, dude, these guys are so big. How are we going to do this? Twelve people went to spy out the good land, the promised land. They said, nope, we can't do it. I don't know. God was, was whatever he was said. It's just, it's not, it's not true. How can we get this thing if there's giants? There's an impossible situation in front of me. How can God be good when I'm facing the impossible? So if you feel like, oh, just if I can get this perfect spouse, my marriage will be good. Marriages are valleys. Just if God can bless me with kids, that's it. I'm going to be the happiest person. Even families have valleys. Only if I can get, you know, this job or, or business. Man, I'm going to have so much money. My life is going to be good. Many people ask me, should they start a business? I said, run away from it. Because <laughs> the valleys it carries is very tough. It does have the mountaintops. But can you handle the valleys? Every promise that God has given to each one of us will carry a season in it that we must pass through. And this is a season that determines how we respond in the season, how fast we get out and we go to our mountaintop experiences. So the first thing is the valleys are part of life. Number two is the valleys happen to everyone. Yes, it happens to pastors, right? It happens to the rich, to the poor, to the young, to the old. If you read the Bible from the beginning to end, you'll see people that walked with God. You see people that God was like, this is, this is the guy. Yet he goes through such a tragic thing in his life. We are not exempt. It, it's some people are like, well, why should I serve God then? Why should I do this if, if, you know, if things are happening to good and the bad? But we have to understand, it's not that why is it happening to him or that. The question is, who are you going this valley experience with? Because God wants to prepare us for this time that he can build us to become stronger, that we can go to our different area life, to our destiny, where God has called us to be. Our destiny requires character and character is made through trials. You have to understand high places are slippery places. High places require focus. High places require strength. It, it, it requires that, you know, you get mislooked at. You, you get almost like unnoticed. You get unpreached. All these things. That's what high places carry. So many people that I, that I did life with, they got married over a simple argument. They get divorced. Is it the marriage that failed them or the person that got into marriage failed its? 
You have to understand the season that you're going through right now. Somebody's in that season succeeding. So it's never the season. It's the person that is in that season that is going. God placed a dream on Joseph's heart. Says, look, you're going to have stars and the moon bow down to you. But, but, but don't think that you're just going to usher into that destiny without having to go through the dry pit. Without having to usher in through false accusation. Being sold as a slave. Being lied against. Being forgotten. And then you'll get into your destiny. Why? Because once Joseph got into that destiny, he understood the pressure of that destiny that it carries and he was able to do it well. Why? Because he has passed through the valley of the dry pit. He's passed through the valley of false accusation, being sold as a slave. He passed as a valley of being falsely accused. He passed as a valley of being forgotten as he was answering somebody else's dream. And then the mountaintop experience came. God many times has blessed us with kids that God says, I'll raise out of them people that will change the city, that will change the schools. But the valley experience of raising them is up to you. Yes, there is a promise of God that God will bless your kids, bless your family. But raising them, you understand, it's not an easy task. Many times you wake up and you say, God, this is the best thing in my life. A few hours later, they're the ones ripping your hair out. Making you scratch yourself and rethink life. Why am I alive at this point? You can't have the highs if you don't have the lows. If you mismanage the lows, you just extend that valley experience longer and longer. God says, look, I want to take you to a promised land, but you have to pass through the dry desert. How are you going to respond in that dry desert? Are you going to come in this dry desert and complain, God, why me? Why this, this? Or say, God, you are with me when I had the good things. You're with me when I have nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. And God says, you're ready for your mountaintop experience. Amen. Psalm 34, 19, it says, the good man does not escape all troubles. He has them too, but the Lord helps him each and each and every one of them. Number three is the valleys are unpredictable. You can't predict it, can't time it, can't over prepare for it. They come when you least expect it, right? Sometimes they say when it rains, it pours. Some things just begin to add up and God wants to be able to test our character. God wants you to know that if the blessing comes, is that blessing going to draw you away from God? Or you're going to say, God, if you gave me, I still love you, God. If I don't have it, I still love you. I'll still remain faithful. How many times we'll be able to see, because it's during the valley time experience, we really truly value what is the most important things in our life. Is it the season or the circumstance that we're going through or the place and the destiny that God has called and who is the giver of that blessing and who's the giver of that destiny? Amen. Proverbs 27 one says, don't ever brag about tomorrow since you don't know what the day will bring forth. First thing I want to encourage you with is that God is with you in your valley. He hasn't abandoned you. Somebody tell your neighbor, say God is with you. Tell the other neighbor, say, God is with me. The favorite scripture that, that we read in Psalm 24, 23, it says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. A few things to note here is that David says that there's even though I walk through the valley, not around the valley, not God, please keep me from this valley. No, God says, I want to be with you in it. I can't show myself as being powerful if you are, don't have a circumstances to have my power flow through you. You know, been in church for so many years, I've seen certain things that I pray for, I, I ask God for, and there's certain things that God says, I want you to go through it because you've known me as a healer, but I want you to experience me right now as your healer. That's where faith begins to grow. That's where you no longer depend. Faith is not no longer dependent on the result of prayer, uh, but who God is. 
You say, God, I know that you're a healer, whether you heal me or not. God, I know that you're my deliverer, whether you deliver me or not. God, I hold on to your promise because I know it's not what happens around me, but it's who you are in my life. And if you are with me in this valley, I know you're not going to leave me here. You begin this work and you'll complete it through the end. He's walking with me. I just got to keep on going. I just got to keep on walking because I know he's holding my hand tight. He's not letting me go. I love this, this Psalm in 139, 7 verse 10. It says this, is, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. It says, if I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me even in your darkest time God says even if you're gonna make your bed in hell God says I'm still here with you I'm not leaving you yes it's dark yes you might not see anything happening but as the valley of the it's a shadow of death you have to understand it's not death it's a shadow it's something that no longer has power over you. Why? Because Jesus says I, I, I defeated death in grave it's only just a shadow in your life Shadows are always many times they look much bigger. Like if you look at my shadow right now, it's like 20 sizes that, that I am, but it's not the real me. Shadows many times portray that they're so much bigger than the thing actually is. But Jesus says it is, it is the shadow that is passing. How do you defeat a shadow? How do you, how do you overcome in that place where you're seeing the shadow? You simply have to understand that shadow is there because there's a presence of light. Because the shepherd is with you. If there is no shadow, that means there is no light. But the fact that there is a shadow in your life, the presence of a shepherd is there. He's with you. Even if I make my bed in hell, Jesus says, I'm with you. The uttermost, deepest part of the sea, Jesus says, your, your hand is with me. Your right hand is holding me securely and it's not letting me go. I'm going with you through this valley experience. Why? Because there's a destiny that I've called you for and I'm going to take you there. There's a destiny that I've called you to win the cities. There's a destiny I've called you to raise your kids. There's a marriage that I called you to be an example to other marriages. There's a sickness that you might pass through that you will have a testimony to say, I was facing death, but God is my healer and he healed me in my outermost parts. When there's a shadow, there's a presence of the light. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Amen, someone. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not be in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen. Isaiah 43, 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. It says, and the rivers will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you're not, you shall not be burned and the flames won't scorch you. I was looking at the, the story of Peter and Jesus and, and Jesus is almost like, Peter was like, hey, let me do this and let me walk and let me do this miracle. This thing is so cool. I want to be like above the nature and, and I feel like Jesus on purpose let him fail to explain to him that I can be with you when you're walking on the water, but I'll also be there when you are drowning. I'll also have my hand there when you feel like things are just not looking good. When you look at the promised land and the giants are so dangerous, saying it's impossible. Nobody's ever in my family had a good marriage. How is it possible for me to have a good marriage? Nobody in my family ever had, you know, me and my house will serve the Lord. The kids are involved. Nobody ever had that. How can this happen to me? But Jesus says, I'm there with you when you're feeling like you're drowning. I'm with you in that area when you feel like your family's falling apart. Why? Because I am your comforter. I am your strength. I am your healer. I am your deliverer in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands for the mighty working God that we serve. <laughs> Psalm 73 verse 28 says, As for me, God's presence is all I need. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter. Make that your heart's cry. That as for me, God's presence is all I need. Because you have to understand that you by yourself can fail, but you and God can never fail. Because God is not on his resume. He doesn't fail. By yourself, you will fail. I can guarantee you that. I can testify, give a testimony I failed. But you and God will not fail. 
hold on to God and say, God, your presence is all that I need. Second thing I want you to note is that God has a purpose for my valley. God is a good God and he cannot do evil. He's just, it's not in his nature. Now that's not who he is, but he says there's a purpose for the valley that you are going through. It's not just by mistake that you are here. There's a, there's, a, there's a character that needs to be built in this valley in order for you to enjoy the blessing that God has prepared for you. There's nothing worse for you to get to your promised land and have sleepless nights because of the giants that are in the land, right? There's nothing worse for you to get the business that you've been praying for and have sleepless nights because you can't pay the bills. Is that a blessing? Because my Bible says that the blessings of the Lord have bring no sorrows with it. So that's why God wants you in the valley time experience. God says, I want to prepare you that when you do get married, you're happily married. That when you do have kids, you and your kids will serve the Lord together. That your body will be strong. That you have a clear vision for your mind. That you'll be able to excel in everything that you do. Why? Because during the, during the valley time experience, God has built your character. In this Romans 3, Romans 5, 3 verses 5, it says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not dis lead us to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, that He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill us, fill our hearts, with his love. God wants to build faith in you in your valley time experience. God wants to build that character, the endurance, the patience that when sickness comes, you say, you know, God has delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear. God will deliver me from this Philistine here and now. He is faithful. He has not abandoned me. I am holding next to him. I know I will overcome. I know I'll overcome. And the last thing is that God will strengthen and reveal himself to you. Colossians 1 11 says, God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you, will, that you will not give up when troubles come, but you will be patient. God cannot be who he is unless you have an opportunity to reveal himself to you. We have to understand many times God comes to Israel. He says, I'm the God of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob, but I'm also the God for you here and now, and I'll deliver you. It was only that they knew, they only experienced God until they found themselves in a position when they were being chased by, by the Egyptian army and they saw the sea and they said, look, we're facing death. We saw suicide. This is, this is nothing's going to happen. God says, I'm leading you by the cloud by day and a pillar by night. I'm also your great deliverer. Yes, I was the deliverer to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want to be delivered to you today. I know I was a healer to Sarah that had bone cancer, but I also want to be the healer in your life here and now. I know I was peace for Martin and Vasily and for Rudy, but I want to be a peace that surpasses all understanding for you here and now. Sometimes God gives that opportunity in our life, which looks like a valley, the hardest time of our life. We begin to ask God, where are you? God says, I'm right here. I want to manifest myself to you. I want you to not just know about me. I want you to experience me. I want you to be able to know who I am in the midst of the storm. I want you to know me who I am when you're sick in your body. And you can stand on my promises in Exodus 26, 15, that I am the Lord that heals. I want you to experience many times the chaos, the worry, the anxiety that comes in this world and to be experiencing me of the peace that surpasses all understanding that can fill your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Many times we sing that God, you're good, you're my provider, you're my provider, but until we have lose that job or lose that business or go through bankruptcy or lose, get our car repoed and lose our house, God says, I want to show myself to you that you experience me as your provider, as it says in Philippians 4.19.
I want to show myself as your strength. Paul comes to, to Jesus. He asks, Jesus, take this thing away from me. This thorn for me is hard. I can't handle it. And, and Jesus replies that my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power can manifest itself in my life. The question is that not if you're going through a valley or not. The question falls down to who are you going through the valley time experience with? You may be right now on your mountaintop experience, and I have to tell you, the few short years that I live, they're far few in between, right? A lot of the time in our lives, we do spend in the, in the valley time experience. But the question is, who are you going through? Do you have a shepherd by your side? Who is holding your hand when things just seem like, I'm not making out of this thing. I, I, it's too difficult. Nobody's ever done it in my, in my family. I'm the first to experience this. This is, this is what's going to be. I'm going to fall for it. And Jesus is holding your side. And just like David, he said that, look, there's this, there's this valley thing that you have to go through. But I know that you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen.